Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trade uh weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody is uh, healthy. I think it's the most important part, healthy. Take control of your health, guys, especially for all you guys in your 20s and 30s. Eventually, if you neglect your health, you're going to start seeing really, really quickly how your body will fight against you. So exercise, eat right, healthy, breathe, do something nice for yourself, keep your body in motion and your body and mind will love you back. For everybody else, if you could be so kind before we get into the broadcast, uh, if you like our contact, you're getting value, all I'm asking for is please like the video, share, subscribe. Uh, let's help us get the word out of non-biased or unbiased uh, technical analysis. So let's start off with about a week ago. You guys remember a week ago or a couple of weeks ago um, where we were in the middle of a really, really aggressive cycle and all we kept on hearing on social media, and again, social media, it, it's it's like Netflix. I treat social media like Netflix. 98% of everything that I see on social media, I just laugh. It doesn't make a difference if it's from Fintwit, if it's from funny videos, politics, whatever the case is, I just laugh because it's all nonsense to me. Uh, I know a 15-year-old is not making 100 grand a day. I know that this business will put you to hell and back, that, uh, that you will think about quitting 30 times a day. I know all this stuff and I all know how long it takes for you to feel comfortable in your own skin before everything kind of slowly but surely clicks. So I use it as a form of entertainment. However, something really started bothering me uh, about a week, week and a half ago. And we kept on reiterating that point on the video that as the market was coming in, that's all the market was doing. The market was coming in uh, very, very aggressively. And all you kept on seeing was a lot of people talking about the market's crashing, the market's crashing, the market's crashing. And at that point, I, you know, I made I made the video, uh, you know, a week ago. I think on, on the fifth of um, September, just saying, "Hey guys, I, I don't I don't understand this whole narrative. How could the market be crashing? Yes, we're coming in aggressively. Yes, we're getting beautiful, beautiful opportunities to the downside. But we're up twelve percent for the year. We're up 11, 12 percent of the year. How can we possibly be crashing? And and again, it really does show you how there are so many loud voices, right? Exaggerated voices will do anything for clicks and likes and uh, impressions and all that stuff. And, and guys, the most important part is I keep on reiterating the point. I don't care if you're trading for 25 years or 25 minutes. All the opinions that you need, all the data that you need is right here. It's right in front of your chart. So how can the market be crashing if we were still up 12% for the year? And here we are, right? Here we are about what? About uh, eight, nine days later, okay? Uh, not only did the market not crash according to social media, but the market kind of woke up, woke up very, very aggressively. Uh, a lot of data in the last eight, nine uh, days, a lot of stuff, right? A lot of stuff to digest. Uh, really pretty much everything we kind of reiterated for the last week or so. Is the Fed ready to uh, ready to cut rates? Like I've been saying for uh, about a month or so, I don't believe a rate cut will happen before uh, the election, again, I could be wrong. I'm an idiot after all. Uh, but it, again, the market is really embracing all this data. We had CPI uh, on Wednesday. We had PPI on Thursday. And the more important part is the market kept on taking that first punch, right? Taking the first punch and started grinding back higher. And when you look at the end of the week, and this was, honestly, this is one of the better trading weeks I can remember in a very long time. Um, really good. I mean, really, really good. We'll get to the pivots in a second. Uh, if you've been following along the whole week, uh, NVIDIA went absolutely bananas. Amazon broke out stupidly, right? Stupidly broke out. Microsoft, we were waiting, finally caught uh, Microsoft. Tesla having a little bit of issues. We'll get to that in a second. But if you look at the numbers for the week, it's staggering numbers, man. You have the S&P up 4%, okay? Uh, the Dow up 2.6%, uh, but the big one, right? The big one is the NASDAQ zoomed up, right? Zoomed up. 6% for the week. That's a big deal. And hey, by the way, guess what happened, right? Guess what happened? We reclaimed back the 50-day moving average. That's kind of a big deal. And the last time, again, we kind of re referenced to the importance of the 50-day. The last time we reclaimed, we went on August uh, August the 15th, we went from 
uh, let's see here, from 474.80s uh, to 485.50s in four sessions. Uh, Thursday was day one, over the 50-day moving average. There was a video on Thursday, uh, and we closed up another two and change today. So let's see. I mean, let's see if the Bulls could keep, keep on going. The big, next big hurdle for the Bulls, number one, is going to need to continue to close above the 50-day. The problem with this last uh, area of uh, concentration, there was a big struggle for the 50-day. It lasted for about two weeks. We kept on reclaiming and then losing it. Reclaiming and they kept on losing and ultimately lost and we got we got hit really, really incredible. So the, the, the key job for the Bulls is two things. Keep on closing above this 470, 471 area on the queues. But the next big hurdle to kind of leap over is this whole channel here where it kept on getting stuffed uh, only a week and a half ago is this 478 level. Guys, write down that 478 level on the queues. Uh, any close above 478 on the queues. And we have a legitimate shot going back to the 485 highs of where we kind of peaked out initially on the first uh, reclaiming of the 50-day moving average. So again, any close above 470 risk is on. Any close below 470 if you're an active swing trader, then risk is off and you start going uh, sell bias. But right now, everything looks good. And your your job right now is to keep on looking for stocks that are just getting above the 50-day moving average, reclaiming it, and started building higher. So it's a very, very important point. Uh, this week, you know, this week, uh, you have a lot of names uh, that broke out last week. Uh, let's see if they could keep on going, right? Let's see if they could keep on going. So let's start, start talking about some charts. Obviously we know above the 50 day, we are set up at least on the bullish camp to start the week. We'll see if the bulls can live with prosperity and hold on to these gains, but ultimately from face value, at least we have to prepare to the upside. Let's start off with, uh, let's kind of back test. So let's start off with last week's pivots, right? Well, uh, on Friday's pivots. If you guys remember on Wednesday's video, we uh, we talked about several names. We talked about Microsoft being ready. We talked about ARM with a, with a res day, with an inside day from the previous day's highs. And we spoke about Coin and Tesla and Apple, right? So let's talk about it, right? Let me just see if there was any pivots below that. No, it's okay. So here's Microsoft. Uh, beautiful, beautiful two-day trade. We got along this thing at 425 on Thursday. Again, there was no video on Thursday. And on Friday's notes, needs to confirm the pre-market highs of 42780s for more upside. Again, look look at the common denominator in all these trades, right? So here was Tesla. We got along at 25. It closed above the 50-day moving average on Thursday. Confirmed this whole channel here. And da 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 da. I closed out the position uh, in the 430s. Very very happy uh, with, uh, the two day run. I'm looking for a little bit of a pullback. I hope I get it. I probably, I probably should have uh, held on to a little runner, but again, I, I like to take my gains. It's just, it's just always this market has been so aggressive, especially with the geopolitical, uh, cloud of uncertainty, uh, that is above us. You know, they could take back gains uh, all the time. So I, I never look at one trade as the ultimate trade It's just keep on stacking, 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 but Microsoft, uh, does look great. It looks like it's hot, has higher prices. I would like to get a dip if there's any profit taking early on Monday uh, into the uh, into uh, the early part of the session. See if we can scoop up some cheap shares on the rising 60 minute supports. So, but beautiful move, 425 uh, to the four almost 432 area in 24 hours. If you guys remember Arm from Wednesday's video, we talked about um, it had a great move into the 50 day. It got stuffed. Now it had an inside day. It needs to reclaim. Well, ARM got upgraded. Okay, ARM got upgraded Friday morning. And I got, here's the notes. Upgraded and now over the 50-day, 43.15 needs to confirm the pre-market highs. And that was a beautiful move. Really, really gorgeous move. And again, here's the common denominator, right? So Thursday, right? Thursday, it got stuffed into the 50-day moving average back-to-back -back days. It opened above the 50-day moving average. Look at the 60-minute view, Right? Opened above the 50 day moving average. Okay. And once it got above this 83.15, yikes, right? Went all the way up to 150. Again, this thing looks really, really good. And same notes as Microsoft, same notes as ARM. I uh, use weakness for potential uh, to get cheap shares as long as we're above the 50 day moving average. Here's where, here's where people just don't understand the concept of the headlines. People talk about all the time, you got to trade the news. The news is just a filter system. Some news is, you know, unless it's a company specific headline that is materialistically going to affect the company, 
Everything else is talking heads. Listen to the headline on Friday. All right, listen to the headline on Friday. The Biden administration, who the hell even knows if this guy is even, even breathing, but the Biden administration is cracking down on China e e-com companies. By the time this plays out, it's going to be two, three years, okay? Whether this is even is a, is a thing. I go, this is nonsense news, complete nonsense news. Uh, Meta was down, what, five, six dollars pre-market. I go, let's see if this thing goes green. Because if this thing goes green, it could confirm, right? It could confirm the previous channel. It didn't quite confirm, but look at what Meta did. It soaked up, right? It soaked up the whole gap down. Look at look at the Meta gap down. People, you know, again, people are chasing nonsense news or hitting nonsense news. They got caught. Guys, look how close Meta is to busting this whole formation. This is a formation that's going back to August the 26th, okay? We are in September 14th. We're talking about a month and a half distribution and Meta engulfed that whole nonsense news. If Meta takes out this whole channel here, folks, look at this how long. This is a month and a half channel. We saw some aggressive buyers coming in for the next two weeks for 550 calls. Folks, watch Meta, okay? Watch Meta in the next couple of days. If this thing busts this whole formation, this thing is going to light up, especially if we continue to build uh, over the 50 day moving average. But again, you, you got to, you know, you got to use your brain. The Biden administration, does he really even have an administration? Does he even know where he is? And I say that, of course, respectfully. Uh, Coinbase, beautiful move. Uh, Coinbase 6550 uh, needs to confirm the 10 day. Here was Coinbase, right? Here is the Coinbase. We talked about Coinbase. I think on Wednesday, we talked about Coinbase. It finally busted out, put up a $3 candle in a matter of a couple of minutes, 6550. I uh, traded all the way up to 69. Beautiful move there on uh, Coinbase. Obviously, it's going to be Bitcoin uh, sensitive. Here's one name that, and, and here's here's my take on it, okay? Here's kind of my take of what's going on on Tesla. So Tesla's been grinding up, right? It's been grinding up. If, you, if you're not an active trader, you probably don't notice what's going on. Here's kind of the good news, not event news uh, on Tesla. So Tesla got back above the 50 day. You guys remember that? The video we were talking about like three, four days ago. Hey, let's see if we get back to that uh, 235 level. So it's making its way to the 235 level. And the weird part about this trade, right? Because I've taken out the Tesla three days in a row above the previous day's high, and it ended exactly the same way. And let me, let me explain what's going on. So it reclaimed the 50 day moving average off this, um, off this uh, 224 level, right? And it went to 226. The next day I got long, uh, it went to 231. The next day, excuse me, went to 228 and a half, reversed ridiculously hard, went down like six points. So I, I got like a lot. I got three days in a row of the kind of the same thing going on. It, it took out the previous day's range. It gave some cash flow. You know, uh, I forgot which what day it was. I think it was on Wednesday. It gave us at least a couple of points and then it crashed again. But for whatever reason, even though Tesla is giving four consecutive days above the 50 day moving average of higher highs and higher lows, there's been a massive seller in the crowd. It's very, very obvious because every single time it gets to a meaningful level on a second entry on the 60 minute supply, there's a massive seller in and they knock down the stock intraday like three, four dollars, which is very, very odd. I'm very curious to see, and there's still, the good news is they're still coming in with a lot of really good short-term uh, 235, 240 call buyers. So I still believe there is a shot that they they, they, they test that 234, 235 level this week. But the point is, it's putting in higher highs and higher lows, but it's really not advancing like we wanted to see advance, like all of us who, who trade Tesla know uh, the capabilities that it could. So I'm very, very curious to see if they finally clean up that seller. It's an obvious seller out there. If they can clean up that seller, attack that 235 level, and start building for the next leg up. But ultimately, again, it is producing at least cash flow uh, throughout uh, the week. Uh, Apple uh, never got to the second entry of 223.50s. And here's the, the point of here's the point of the power of supply and demand, right? NVIDIA for experienced traders, right? Uh, it's the 50-day moving average. If it holds, it's going to bounce. Uh, NVIDIA traded... 11716 like like a ping pong ball or not a ping pong ball what's what's those b balls that when we were little kids they used to they used to bounce really high those super balls whatever they, they were called so it got down to literally it got down to literally the 50 day moving average on the daily and decided to pop up five dollars really really quickly congratulations to all you guys uh who caught it uh, i love the distribution i love the rest i love the fact that it's building now day two uh, above the 50-day moving average. Let's watch NVIDIA for this week. 
Uh, I'd like to see maybe one more day of rest, uh, but let's watch NVIDIA this week. If they start building uh, above last week's highs, we could get a next push up to the 24, uh, 25 area. Uh, let me give you guys some names uh, that look interesting for this week as well. Okay, uh, let me give you guys some names for this week as well. So we talked about Meta. We obviously talked about NVIDIA. Um, look at MSTR, right? Look at MSTR. So MSTR got rejected at the 50-day moving average on Friday. Everybody see that, folks? If MSTR reclaims back the 50-day moving average, there's a shot this thing goes back to the 826 highs of 152. Keep an eye on uh, MSTR. And look at a firm. A firm, they still continue to come uh, for the $50 October calls. So watch this thing uh, over the 830 highs. This thing looks really good. Uh, ASTS, there was a big high flyer uh, all course of the year. Uh, it kind of broke this whole instance, uh, oh, this whole formation here. Uh, stop at supply on the 20-day. If it could reclaim back the 20-day moving average, maybe this thing uh, wakes up as well. And let me give you guys a little bit of a cheapy uh, NVEX, right? So look at the formation on NVEX. NVEX had a pretty big run here uh, going back to uh, May, right? Uh, look how tight this full formation is. This thing is very, very close. If this thing can bust the August highs, this thing could potentially run up you know, run up into the 1550s. So for all you guys who are trading a little bit smaller names, uh, definitely, definitely uh, keep an eye on that as well. So market is good. Apparently the market did not crash, right? Apparently the sky did not fall. Folks, it's very, very important. Stop listening to opinions. Stop listening to everything. Every piece of information that you need and want and desire is right in front of you. Again, whether you're trading 25 plus years like me or you're trading 25 minutes like potentially like you, okay? We all get the same data, okay? You don't need opinions where the stock's going to go. It's all right in front of you. And the faster you figure that out, the higher probability you will extend your shelf life. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Be well. And with God's help, I'll see you all in the field on Monday. Take care.